Hello, good afternoon. This is Marie Piazza here, and I have my special guest today, Jennifer, and she will be talking about clean eating. We'll also be talking about the five days that I have asked you to do some homework. We're also going to talk about a sexy, sensual food and the best foods that you can have to make you feel good. And you can also share with us your sexy food and your sensual food as well. So, Jennifer is a good friend of mine, and she's actually my accountability buddy for many, many things. So I'm very excited because she's a health coach and she's a food scientist and she's going to tell you a bit more about that now. So Jennifer, tell us a bit more about what you do. Sure, sure no problem. So I am, let's, let's start off. First of all, I am a, um, I had my bachelor's in dietetics, so I'm all about nutrition. I then became a food scientist and I worked in the food industry for probably about five to six years. I decided that that really wasn't my my passion. And so from then I became a Pilates instructor and taught, I've been teaching Pilates for 10 years. And about three years ago, I became a certified health coach. So I'm a food scientist, a Pilates instructor, and also a certified health coach. As well as a mother and a wife and other things too. And you do as, the washing, right? <laughs> as well as a mother and a wife and a friend and everything else there is under the sun. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell us more about food science. Sure. So food science pretty is, so I, I worked in the food industry, which honestly is, I would say kind of the polar opposite of what I preach. Um, food science is looking at how to make food. I worked in a couple of different areas. Um, I worked in a food coloring where I would actually, uh, People would send in food and I would come up with natural food colors to make it look better. Um, and then I worked in natural antioxidants where I would um, try to get a longer shelf life. So food science is looking at actual how food is put together to um, keep it fresher, longer, to keep make it have a longer shelf life. Um, but honestly, I hate to say it like this, but that's totally opposite as to what I kind of eat now. Like I try to eat anything that's not packaged, that I don't have to look at the ingredient label, that I hope it doesn't have a label. So I'm kind of the, uh, I come from kind of a techie background where I can look at a label and all of those weird chemicals and stuff, I know what those are and what they do in the food. <laughs> so technically you learn what you don't want to do. But food science, we can't avoid it because it's in our everyday food, how we eat our life. And exactly. We can't really learn from that. We just have to make better choices in reading labels. But for you, you'd understand more of those long words. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be having so much of it. Well, exactly. And I think one of the best things I can do is educate people how to read those labels and what to look for and what to avoid. And one of the first things I tell all of my clients is when you look at a label, if you don't know what something is, like put it back on the shelf. I mean, if it's got polysorbate 80, if it's got propylene glycol, if it's got stuff that just doesn't sound like food, Put it on the shelf. You don't need it. You want things that you know what they are. You don't need to be putting chemicals in your body. See, I recall when before people were really into food labeling, when you looked at food labels, you actually should have felt reassured that you were being told the information and I, and, I, and I know what's going in the food. So you skim over it and look at it because it all sounds very true and reassuring. And over time, the actual long words, which, they, which we, when, when I was at um, nutrition school, those long words were scary to people. So they shortened them to make it more enticing to us that we were getting something not as... Um, yes, you cut out at the last second, so I missed the last part of that, but it, it yeah, and on, I'll be uh, totally honest, the food industry is very tricky. They're very tricky, and they're very cunning, and they knowingly put things in food to make it addictive, um, and they normally, and they do put things on labels to 
like like natural. Like natural really doesn't mean anything. Like they high fructose corn syrup they call natural, which you and I both know that's not natural. It's processed, you know, corn. So, you know, it's it's kind of sad in a way, but I think we we just need to educate everyone as to what you're truly eating, what you're putting in your mouth, because really what you put in your mouth has a huge effect on how you feel, how your body looks, um, and, and what you're doing so that you can function and thrive and feel your best every day. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's an industry, so that's their job to get as much as they can from an industry so we can eat more, buy more, um, read what we can, just consume. Oh. And that's the point. And if we, and we start to feel addicted to it, then really we don't know, or we didn't know before, that that was actually the plan. We thought we were the ones that got addicted to certain types of food when the plan was to get us addicted to the food. Yes. Yes, exactly. They knowingly, like they, they call it the, the bliss point. They knowingly yeah. put sugar, fat, salt in to get you to the bliss point where you get those good endorphins, where you feel so good. And they know they, I mean, they test this, they do sensory testing. They do all sorts of chemical tests and experiments. They know exactly what they're doing. They know, I mean, look at like, I hate to call out like things, but like, like Lay's potato chips, you know, you can't just eat one. Well, well, yeah, because they put so much fat and salt in there that, that unhealthy fat and salt that yes, you, your body becomes addicted. You want more. So it's, it's, yes. yeah, I, I get that. I get, that. I was watching a, a movie. I can't remember what it was called. It was on Netflix and they was talking about the two twins that were, were uh, had, I think 30 days to eat. Uh, one had high fat, one had sugar. There were different things they had to eat. But it, that they found that when they were testing people for the combination, the most lethal combination for people to gain weight or to be addictive was fat, sugar, and carbs. That combination together was that magic combo, something like cheesecake or a donut with the sprinkles on it. Those were the things that made people feel good straight away. And it, they couldn't help themselves but to keep eating it because it just made them feel so loved and so everything was, uh, the snatches were just kicking in. Well, and that's the so, thing. So, yeah, I, yes. And, and sugar specifically, sugar is actually eight times more addictive than cocaine. So when you eat wow. sugar, it wow. is lighting up the same part of your brain that would be if you were like, having drugs. I mean, it's this, it's the same thing and it's more addictive. So honestly, the biggest thing you can do for your health is to stay away from refined sugar. It's, it's not, I mean, yeah. So I could be on my soapbox here all day. Because it's not, it's like, we, we, we could be talking about this for a long time because the actual fact is when you give up sugar, it's hard. But once you're off sugar, your body doesn't crave it as much anymore. So exactly. we can talk about sugar another time, but today will tell us something, some good news about some sexy food. <laughs> well, definitely. Food when you don't have a boyfriend or your husband's not around. I know, just I know, decadent. I know. So, just feed yourself. so yeah, so I don't want to sit here and like demonize food because I, number one, I, I love food. I love food. I love to eat. I love to eat good food. I, I mean, it's just like, it's one of my favorite things. I love to cook. I love to experiment in the kitchen. I'm a, I am a food scientist, so I love to experiment, but I love to experiment with healthy food. So I've tried to kind of think of some foods that would be like my biggest high energy, make you feel the best about yourself, the most bang for your buck foods. Um, and right off the top of my head, I would say green leafy vegetables, I know they're not the sexiest, but they are going to make you feel the sexiest because they are the best things you could be having. Kale, spinach, mixed greens, lettuce, any type of greens. Oh, they're so, so good for you. It's like nature's superfood. Okay, so if we say to people that green veggies, they make you feel special, we have to kind of, put it in with something 
visually for them to see that, right? So what would we put in with the green veggies? Because I'm I love green veggies, so you don't have to convince me at all. But the right. average person would not consider green veggies sexy unless we put something like, I don't know, beets or smells of carrots or some dates or something in there, mm -hmm. you know, that something a bit decadent to bling it up a little bit. What would you suggest that we could put in there to make it? So that would be their base. Because so that, that would is going to the, build them up. The base. So yes. So any, and then I would say the second thing is any sort of berry. Berries are the other thing. Like obviously you hear eat the rainbow, but berries are nature's superfoods. So strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, any type of berries are really high in antioxidants. Um, right. And that's what gives them those brilliant colors and they are low in sugar. So even though they're fruits, so a lot of people think, well, I, you know, I can't eat fruit because it's high in carbs. No, 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 no. Please eat fruit, eat the whole fruit. It's like the fruit juice and the dried fruit and stuff like that. That's where it can really cause your blood sugar to rise. And so you want to maybe stay away from those, but like berries and anything that's like a brighty, brightly colored fruit is so, so good for you. Pineapple, pineapple is fabulous. Pineapple has an enzyme in it that has been proven to um, proven to shrink tumors and to prevent cancer. So fruit is is wonderful. It's just you want to eat the whole fruit. Don't juice it. Or or the other thing you asked how to get more greens. I love green smoothies. Green smoothies. And I have a green yes. smoothie recipe on my website that is that's my go to. I love. It's got pineapple. It's got celery. It's got an apple, pear, spinach, kale, um, lemon juice. It's it's so good. A couple of years ago, um, I went on, I think I, I did it for about 18 months. I did raw food. Before that, I did the vegan. I've had all mm -hmm. the combinations I've done. I, I've, I've known that I always try everything that is um, not too way out there. I mm -hmm. will experiment with things not too way out there. No, no fad diets, but I would definitely in, in, do that. And so I, I couldn't really fathom doing the smoothies first and looking at something green. But when I created some things that it didn't matter about the color because it tasted so good. Right. And um, one of the things I had to look at was how much fruit and how much carbs there are in fruit and sh some fruits and sugars. So that was one of the things I did have to be careful about. And would you say that that's a consideration for people? They know. Um, yeah, I would say so. Uh, the other thing I think of is when you are having a smoothie, I myself like to add protein powder to it just to give it more of kind of like staying power. So instead of like anytime you have just like one thing, I think it's good to kind of combine different foods. And when I look yes. at when I'm eating and when I'm having meals or even snacks, I want to keep my blood sugar as stable as possible. So how do we do that? We make sure that we always have protein. So I, I add protein powder to my smoothies. So that way, and plus it keeps me fuller longer because my day is busy. I don't have a ton of time to eat. And so I have to plan ahead. And, you know, I love that I can take a smoothie as I'm driving the kids to school. And then I go to the studio where I'm teaching back to back to back. So I don't have time to sit and eat. Um, so yes, so, so you plan your day quite well when it comes to your food. That's how you manage to obviously stay as fantastic looking as you are because you know your food and you factor that in your busy life. Yes. So I would say planning is the number one key to my success. I have to plan. I have to know so that I am not when I come home at five o'clock and if I don't know what I'm eating, and I'm stressed, the first place I'm going to go is the cabinet and maybe pick something that's that's easy, you know, something that's easy. And usually that's not the best. But if I have a plan laid out and then it, it also it frees up my brain to think about everything else, because if I know what I'm going to eat the whole day in advance, I've already I've already bought all the ingredients. I've already done all the prep like it's ready to go. And then it's brain. I don't have to think about it like it's just done. It's That's done. right. 
because it's ready and you don't have to, to rummage looking for something and then say, oh, so I'll do it tomorrow. I'll start tomorrow. I'll eat properly tomorrow. Um, right. I should have done that. I should have got my lunch ready. I should have got my dinner ready. I should have known I'd done, I should have done that. And you don't. So then every time you say I should have and I could have, you lose that pattern, that daily ritual, that daily habit, that daily lifestyle that makes you more healthy. Yes. Let's go back to the food again. So when I think of sensual sexy foods as well, uh huh. In the movies, wine, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, dates, mm-hmm. olives, mm-hmm. um, what, what are all the uh, um, oysters? Yes. Um, yes. Lobster. Uh, would you consider that sexy food? Now, what is sexy about that? I mean, why do they always use those things? And grapes and grapes and strawberries with chocolate on uh-huh. feeding the other half? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe it's just, oh, shoot. Um, my phone's ringing. Anyway, it could just be the, the delivery. It's okay, we have a live phone. It. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be the delivery of it. I am not sure. But yes, so some food obviously is um, aphrodisiac. So oysters are the ones that come to mind. Um, dark chocolate obviously comes to mind for me for a, like a sexy food. Um, there's nothing better than a piece of really good dark chocolate. And I'm talking like 72% um, uh, cacao or higher. Uh, let's see, what else would I consider like a sexy food? Dates, definitely. Dates are, they're, they are really high in sugar, but they're also really high in fiber and potassium. So dates actually have more potassium in them than bananas. So dates are great. I would just maybe limit having so don't have like a ton of dates, um, but they're a yeah. great natural sweetener. I use them in a lot of recipes for like little energy balls and stuff like that. I use dates as the sweetener and they're great because they help things stick together. But um, right. yeah. Okay. So wine is one that I'm going to say, yes, would probably be an aphrodisiac. I would definitely say gear towards more red wine. You, and yeah. Just talk for a second. I think someone's trying to catch me. Oh, sure. Um, so I would gear more towards red wine just because it's got more, um, healthy antioxidants. It's got more resveratrol in it. And if you can buy organic wine without sulfites added to it, because sulfites, and that's hard to find. I'm in the States, so that's hard to find here in the U S but you can find it and look for it. Um, some other foods that would probably be a good, uh, Good. There you go. You're back. So I would just, you know, I think red wine is great, but I was saying look for organic and look for ones that don't have sulfites added. That's so hard to find. Well, we live anyway in St. Lucia because it would cost a whole bunch more to get that. I mean, I haven't drank wine for months and months since I changed my diet back around. And I thought there's some things have to go Mm -hmm. because when I um, had the club, I was working out all the time, Pilates, yoga, uh, body palm. I was doing 12 or so classes a week. So my life was fitness. So I didn't really have a choice because I was expected to teach the classes, which was really the best way in my whole life that that kept me exercising because I had to show up for everybody. So I couldn't really say no. I couldn't really, um, hey, look at that. We've got a little puppy here. We have a little puppy. We have a little Aww. puppy. <laughs> so cute. He's coming to say hi. Huh? Um, I couldn't really say no. So it kept me working out. So one closed the club and as much when I was at the club. So I did some workout and over time what happened was I um, put on weight. I actually put on 30 pounds in one year. And that was because I went on to do online work instead of offline work. And so I was at my computer, I was studying, I was doing so many different things and it crept on. And it wasn't, I was doing zero. I was actually working out. I was eating well. I wasn't stuffing my face with junk, but I wasn't consistent with my efforts. Mm-hmm. I wasn't consistent with my efforts. I didn't really have a plan because I really thought that I had this backup of superpowers that came with 30 years or more of being mm-hmm. an instructor, being yeah. in the fitness business. And I thought, 
what the heck? I've had all this time that I put in. It should stay, keep me in good. <laughs> right. Dead for a good time. No work to do. I ask you to do every day the five days. Drink extra three uh, cups of water or one liter if you can. And then get half an hour to uh, one hour extra sleep every day. And also to do 10 minutes of workout. I did give you a choice of the workout. It could be dance. It could be some Pilates moves. It could be yoga. You could roll your own. You could do 10 minutes of a video. You could go out with friends and dance. It didn't really matter as long as you did the same time every day for five okay. days. So that you would be feel limber and more energized after the five days are up. You'd be hydrated and you'd be rested. That's what makes people feel sexy, fit, and fabulous. When you feel your best, you can look your best. Do you agree? I agree 150%. I agree. They <laughs> look like. What does my day look like? Yes. Uh, my day looks like uh, I get up or er well, I get up early and I get up because I have two girls that are um, nine and six, and so they need to be to school a little before nine, and then I usually start my day teaching at nine. Um, but I will get up between 6 and 6.30 and take a little time for me to just kind of set my intentions for the day. How do I want to feel that day? Um, and I kind of get in tune with how I need to feel um, inside first. And then I, before I can do anything else, I exercise. So I either do, um, you know, I'll get on the elliptical, I'll lift weights, I'll do like a virtual boot camp. I will do something so that I get that done first, non-negotiable. And then every day, every day you do this. Every day I do this, except on some day, like Fridays today, um, I have a I have a my instructor from that lives about an hour away comes to my studio and teaches me and my friend. Um, so I take a Pilates lessons twice a week. So like this morning, I didn't get up and work out because I knew I had a lesson at nine o'clock. So I don't work on Tuesdays and Fridays. Those are my days to get online business stuff done, to get household stuff done. Kind of those are my days um, for me. And then I, so after I, um, I get breakfast in there, I get the girls' lunches ready, shuffle them off to school, and then I'm usually at my studio teaching uh, either Pilates or health coaching uh, from nine to three or four. Um, so that looks like I'm, you know, I teach in 50 minute blocks, I'll have 10 minute breaks. I make sure that I bring my lunch with me and I kind of eat in between clients, and then it's picking the girls up from school, shuffling them off to soccer practice or ballet or whatever it is that night, um, getting dinner on the table, and then having my husband come home, having some fam family time. And then it's like, and I try to take another half an hour at night for myself to kind of wind down, go through my day, figure out what I need for the next day and go from there. So my, my, I've got young kids, so I'm busy. I am busy right now, but I yeah. I love it. Well, that, that is fantastic. Your day sounds great because I noticed that you take time for yourself and you have your day structured so you know what you're doing each day. Are there any times that you feel like you just don't want to do any of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think we all go through that. And honestly, um, I set up Tuesdays and Fridays to be my days where I get stuff done for me and for my online business. But lately, things have just gotten busy. And I noticed the past last Friday and the day before that, that last Tuesday, I had other things scheduled. And honestly, I hit a wall yesterday. I hit a wall yesterday. And um, my I'm a part of a mastermind with uh, six or five other phenomenal women. And we had our call yesterday and I had a, I had a breakdown. I had a breakdown. Like I just, I was feeling everything. I was feeling overstressed. I was feeling overworked and I just had a breakdown. And honestly, having that support system of those women 
had a cry, got it out, and today I feel like a brand new woman again. So I think having a good support system in place. Yeah, I love hearing you say that because I think that when we're trying to take care of ourselves, especially if you talk about you do your fitness, you do your food, but in order to, to get that all together, you need support so you yes. can take care of yourself so you can do these things. I'm in a mastermind too, and my group is fantastic. And without the mastermind or a group or a girl group or a friend group, you need somewhere that you can either shift from having that mask on of what, that superwoman that everybody thinks you don't feel anything and you're going to keep going and going and going. And that actually propels you to go down in that, that um, valley so you can go back up to the hill. Yes. That's the way I see it. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I'm not going to sit here and say that. And you have to. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, I don't want to sit here and come across as someone that's perfect because I am so not perfect. Um, but I try to do the best I can. And you're doing a wonderful job. I'm glad you're my accountability buddy. I'm glad you're my friend. <laughs> And tell us what you've got um, going on right now, because I know that you're very into clean eating and you're having a five day clean eating experiment coming up. Tell us ab about what that actually means and how people should perceive clean eating. Sure. I hate honestly, I hate like putting a label on something, but clean yes. eating to me means eating food that is as close to how nature has it as possible, um, but eating delicious whole foods without a bunch of additives, without refined sugar, without a bunch of chemicals. And so I've put together a five day, I call it a clean eating experiment, where I give you everything. So basically, if I were to eat perfectly, this is what my diet would look like. Um, and I put together a grocery list, all of the meals. So I tell you what to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. And then um, I give you all of the recipes. So it's all done for you because like I was saying, the hardest thing is the planning. Like you have to, the hardest thing about eating well is that you have to plan ahead. Like it's, it's really easy to, well, maybe not in St. Lucia it isn't. But here where I live, it's really easy to just go through a drive through and pick up something because it's quick. But we, we, we have some easy things here, too. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking it's a tropical paradise and everything is perfect. So <laughs> it's pretty close, yeah. but we have those dis distractions as well. Right. But, you know, like for me, when I'm working every day till four and then I pick up the girls and we have maybe an hour before I've got to get them to soccer practice or whatever. If I don't have a plan in place, then they're eating box macaroni and cheese, you know, and then I'm eating whatever I have on hand, which is probably not going to be the, the best thing. And so it's just planning ahead, doing the grocery shopping once with everything you need. And I think, too, the hardest thing is just coming up with different recipes because I sometimes get stuck in a rut where it's like I'm eating the same thing over and over again. It's like, oh, it's Thursday. looks like we're having tacos tonight. You know, I mean, it's it's yeah, going it's kind of – so, so this is – I overcame that. I have three boys. I overcame that because I – I've learned I have eats and I can come up with something that's delicious that we can work with because I've had to, cause you've got people, boys are always hungry. <laughs> and so I had to learn to have food available or create something, but there's never anything ready. So right. I, I had to have things ready that they could create. Um, mm -hmm. if I wasn't there and I taught that I did it themselves because that was kind of hard because they always depend on me. If I've had a long day, I've come in. And as soon as you walk in the door, mm -hmm. everybody says, I'm hungry. They've been there for, you know, before you got there, they were didn't think about food. But as soon as mom comes in, everybody's hungry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I am sure. I am sure. So when so, does the, the clean 
you start? When does it start? Well, you can do it anytime. So I actually did a live version of it where I would hop on. I've got a, a private group where I hopped on and did all of the, we did all the meal prep together and all of the cooking together. Um, so that went like a couple of weeks ago, but you can go on to um, that link uh, where I'll, Marie will uh, put the link in. For, I'll give you the link. Yep. Um, that you can go on and get all of the recipes and you'll get emails that that I will help you kind of walk through how to do all the prep and stuff like that. So it's going, you can do it like today. You could start tomorrow if you wanted to. To put Jennifer's website, you see it on the, on the screen there. Her website is on there. So you can go and check out her website. She has the best recipes that look so yummy that I want to just do them and eat them. But I want to call her and say, make it for me because... <laughs> I'm terrible when it comes to things, but they're, they're so yummy and they're so good for you uh, that I've, I've stopped making desserts a while back because I would be the one who would be eating them. So yeah. I decided I'd stop occasion or somewhere, I'll do it, but I don't do it at home. There was a uh -huh. time my son had this school nutrition class and all they had was in making desserts for the, for the whole semester. Oh, so we no. had some pie or something, bacon, yeah. I know it was just crazy. But anyway, Jennifer, thank you here today. So this is my experiment. Um, so we're having the five days tomorrow. So I want to check in with everybody. And next week I'll be having special guests and entrepreneurs to share their story with everybody. So I hope that everybody enjoys this. And we'll see you again. Do me some comments first. I will share it. And we'll be seeing you again soon. Anything you want to leave parting words, Chris? Um, no, I, I want to say thank you for having me on. This has been so much fun, although I love to talk to you anytime. So... Um, if you know, I think that food is so vital to, to your health. And when you think about it, what you put in your body makes a huge difference. And I know that it's easy to get wrapped up in the emotional aspects of it. But when you think about it, food really is the fuel for your body. So when you think about before you eat, think about, is this going to help me? Is this going to make me feel my best? Or is this going to make me feel good like right now? And then a half an hour, I want to take a nap. So I like to think about using food as fuel because I want my body to look its best and feel its best um, every day. Yeah, I th the best Part. So for you, we talked about quite a lot of things today, it's replay. And if you have any questions, do contact myself or Jennifer. But I'll see you guys again tomorrow, Saturday. Yes, I'm doing it on Saturday. So you can fit it in anytime you want, because I want you to do it on a downtime when you wouldn't have to rush in your lunchtime or rush after getting the kids from school. Or if you've got kids um, on vacation still from Easter, some kids are. Or you have um, teenagers. You, they can sleep in with me tomorrow morning, okay? So till next time, enjoy your food. Remember, it's not a war, it's your lifestyle. You need to have a lifestyle that you're happy with and you must enjoy eating your food and visually accept what there is to come and what it's gonna do for your body. I believe so, so sincerely that's how, when I work with clients and they send me their food diaries on WhatsApp, I can tell straight away what kind of day they are having just by the pictures they send of their food. When they're doing great, it's colorful, it's beautiful. When they're not, I'll see like a banana or, you know, some Cheetos. <laughs> but it's just, I can see the state of where they are, whether it's anxious or bored. And I tell them, send me everything. And then they can get a look actually and review what they've been sending. They say, oh, I didn't know I really did that. Yes, you did. So that is for you. So the food diary is actually not me for them so till next time thank you miss jennifer i really appreciate that and to everybody out there you're super fabulous courageous ageless women see you again bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.